Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So I've taken a look at a lot of different text to video platforms and I think I finally found one that right off the bat, at least in its infancy, is probably the most impressive I've seen so far. It's not quite as capable as Runway ML because obviously they're the leader in the space, but in terms of coming up within just a few months and producing video that has features that a lot of these other platforms don't actually have, both in terms of camera movement, but also in terms of not requiring you to be too verbose in generating content is something that has me really excited. So if you like our content, please like and subscribe. And now let's get into it. So the platform I'm talking about today is called Morph Studio. And initially I wasn't really sure what to think. I saw some videos that were generated and you never know when you see kind of cherry picked instances on Twitter. And what I really liked about this was it took a similar approach to Pika in that most of its focus was actually bringing motion and perception shift into these videos. While also generally speaking without too much input, creating a scene that has a clear subject, um, clearly is aware of foreground and background. And most importantly, the thing that jumped out to me, and, and this isn't actually marked as a controllable feature, but uh, Morph Studio also seems to have a really uncanny perspective and control and mastery of bokeh and focal length, which is something that has actually really been hard to get right in a lot of these other models. So first I wanna go over sort of some videos that I generated, what I think is really jumping out to me. Then I wanna go over sort of the basics of using it, specifically the features that are available to everyone. And more importantly, the differentiate Morph Studio from a lot of these other text to video tools. We'll do a little bit of image to video, which I think is cool, but just because it shows really the, the bleeding edge of these models and really takes them to just the point of almost breaking. I'll give you kind of my thoughts throughout this. Again, this is all free. There are no limits on this. The speed does vary a little bit, but you should definitely check it out um, by joining the Discord, which is linked below and uh, should be linked up in the right-hand corner of the screen. So let's get into it. So a lot of models that aren't Runway ML seem to be really good right off the bat at oceanic scenes, anything with fish or sea creatures or just underwater things in general. I think this might be because there is an existing corpus of tons of this footage that is really low hanging fruit for a lot of these companies to use. Another thing that stood out to me with Morph Studio is it's really good at animals and particularly the their faces, their actions, and specifically their movements. And within all these, you can tell that there is generally a clear subject unless you tell it that you want more than one subject. And I think camera movement is also important to call out here because generally speaking, the camera movement, whether it's actually dictated by the user or not, will always seem to follow and keep the primary subject in focus or be a movement that shows a crowd and really enhances that the singular subject around these other subjects is still very important. Another really surprising thing to me is that, especially compared to Pika and a number of other tools, the interior space capability of this is quite good. And it's actually better than other areas where you think there'd be generally better capability. Not to say that any of these are lacking. Crowds and humans are also quite good. By humans, I mean talking faces or humans on jet skis and snowmobiles doing things. Basically, the understanding of how humans should move and how they realistically move, say, on a soccer field or in a, a crowded market. And this also brings together kind of my theory here, which is that Morph Studio has found some clever way of understanding the motion and basically relative interactions or realistic looking interactions between a singular subject, whether it's a human or a, a droid of some kind, and a bunch of other ones that also tend to have a systemic motion. So like people walking on a field or soccer players playing a game of soccer. And another test I really like to do with all these models, which initially I started doing with Pika is what I call the ferrofluid test. And for those of you who don't know, ferrofluid is kind of this black viscous fluid that reacts in very distinct ways, specifically with how it moves and how it undulates to magnetic fields. So you can get you know something that's iron that has a magnetic field going through it. Sometimes it changes and the motion of this fluid is dictated in a very specific way. What's also cool is depending on the lighting or the scene behind it, it also really challenges these models with how they want to ray trace or represent light scattering. So I did a few of these. Um, I will say, you know, it did about as well as uh, like early versions of Pika. I think Pika was trained on a lot of scientific video, but it did really well. Granted for context, this is something that Runway ML early on flat out could not do. Even when I was testing this with Pika, Runway really struggled to understand like why ferrofluid mattered and Morph Studio also seems to be very good with kind of product focused things or um, for instance I saw someone uh, in the Morph Studio discord actually generating hundreds of videos 
that appeared to be sort of these subatomic um, sort of particle interaction videos. Even with really complex prompts like that, it was really capable of understanding what the user actually wanted in these really abstract prompts. So how do you actually use Morph Studio? So there are some basic commands that are similar to a lot of other tools. So basically um, slash video is how you'll actually start creating most of what you want to create. And there are some basic commands that let you do some things that are very common and other things that are very uncommon. So basically, you know, slash video, your prompt will get you pretty much what you want. But a big part of Morph Studio is motion and they let you dictate this with the motion command. So basically you use TAC motion and give it a number between one and 10. Uh, if you say one, it'll try to not move as much. 10 will try to animate sort of the subjects and things happening a little bit more. They also have the ability for you to provide an image or something that's a bit more still, even an existing prompt and animate it. Basically animate means provide a text prompt or an image and then have it animated again on a scale of one to 10. You can use this by uh, using slash animate as opposed to slash video and then providing a prompt and providing tack motion again. And some really cool features that came out in late September were their camera features. And these have only continued to get better and be iterated on. They actually just pushed an update last night. And so in Morph Studio here, you can use the tack camera option to zoom pan and actually rotate the camera, which I think is pretty cool because as opposed to just saying, I want more motion, you can now actually dictate that motion. So using tack camera and zoom with the option in or out, or a pan with, um, you know, you can pan up, down, left, or right, and rotate, which lets you rotate the camera clockwise or counterclockwise. And I think these tools are most useful to people that are doing AI video for filmmaking or for specific product features, since it gives you way more fine-tuned control, not quite, you know, cinematic control that you'd maybe have in Blender, but I think it gets really close to a lot of the features that were really just not even a thing in Runway ML and some other text to video tools in the past. And my favorite feature of all of these is they right off the bat had the ability to dictate FPS. And to my knowledge, this is one of the only models that lets you generate videos that are actually 30 FPS. Right now, to my knowledge, um, Runway and Pika are limited at 24 FPS. And 30 FPS video is just really different. It looks so much better. And it's an understatement to explain in terms of engineering and how these models work, how much harder and just how much more compute it takes to actually generate um, a cohesive, smooth video at 30 FPS. And it's also incredibly cool that Morph Studio lets you do this for free right now. You don't, you don't actually have to pay for it. Uh, you do have to wait a little bit longer for 30 FPS videos, just given how much compute they require. But right now it's completely free. So let's actually make a video here. So I'm gonna use the video prompt here. So slash video gets you in. And what I wanna do here is say a lush forest during sunrise with a UFO landing. I'm going to say I want this in 16.9 so it's nice and wide. We want it at 30 FPS. We'll do some motion and I'll say we want to, to zoom. Let's see what this gets us. So here's the final result. I didn't have to wait, really wait that long and I'm really pleased with the results. I also sent this through a few more times after this just so you guys can see it. And I really like the variation that I had in between these. There are also three buttons here. So you can reshuffle, you can regenerate the same prompt and you can just like it and save it to a collection so you can come back to it later. And what's really cool about this is for this video, there were times where I actually had to make like 30 or 40 different prompts all at once. I was never limited. Um, sometimes you wait a little bit longer, but I think it's well worth the wait. And all this was free. I didn't actually have to sign up or pay for any of these videos. Now maybe in the long run that might happen, but for the foreseeable future, um, Morph Studio appears to be entirely free. So if you don't wanna pay for a stable diffusion on a GPU somewhere, or don't wanna mess around doing it locally, I think this is a really great option. Morph Studio also has some dedicated servers where they restrict things to certain themes. For instance, this one is horror movies. So there are some kind of spooky alien kind of panning uh, scenes here. I think it's kind of cool since October is sort of the month of Halloween and there's some really cool stuff in here. It's kind of spooky, fall-like. They also have uh, my favorite, this cyberpunk server where there are also some kind of product oriented things, but I think it's cool to see this stuff showing up here. And there's some really cool kind of alien environments that I think are really unique looking and have, you know, again, the same incredible motion and features that you would come to hope that Morph Studio would definitely deliver in every one of their videos. And they also have environments. So these are 
sort of more uh, temporally consistent prompts that create these really immersive, almost VR-like experiences. So if you'd like to try out Morph Studio, I've linked in the description below. Definitely join their Discord, ask around, uh, generate as many videos as you want for free. There again, there are no limits. I made hundreds of videos uh, in Morph Studio just to make this video. And again, I think it's important to note that, you know, is it as powerful as Runway right now? No, but have they produced a incredible number of features in the few months that they've been actually, you know, publicly releasing this? I think yes. Um, I think there are clear advantages to this when compared to Pika or even some of the other locally runnable models like ModelScope. Um, they're temporally much more consistent. Some of these are actually usable enough to use in ads or some other AI filmmaking applications. I'm really impressed by Morph Studio and hopefully we see lots of cool things to come from them in the future. So again, if you really like our content, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, we hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.